Hey everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here, and this is a special video that I hope to be one of my more important videos over the years of uh, trading and stuff. I'm an educator, I teach trading, and I trade full time. I've been a trader since 1996, and I also host a, a show every day live. I trade, uh, basically, what I do is I tr come into my office and I trade, but I trade live on a, um, on a channel called daytradingradio.com, and it could also be heard on the radio and stuff. That's just a little background about me. If you if you're not famili familiar with myself or day trading radio, um, if you if you found this and you're a trader, well, you found something good. This is hopefully going to be one of my better videos on um, trading the futures, and all of them are really good. But over the last week or two, we've been really concentrating, or I've been concentrating on uh, developing a tighter criteria and a methodology of of really taking advantage of of the futures, the MES, the new micro contract that has been recently introduced to the markets, the micro, and there's going to be a lot going into this video. So you're going to have to have a little knowledge because I'm not going to start out as a basic video, but I wanted to pretty much lay out the plans going forward here at Day Trading Radio because I did this on Friday and I wanted, you know, as, as a broadcaster and also as a trader, it's a fine balance because I'm, you know, we have a big community of traders at Day Trading Radio and we have the chat rooms and stuff. And I'm used to the paying attention to the questions, going over stock charts, going over everything, you know, and, and dealing with every day. And we get into the off, I get into the office around 7.30, 8 o'clock. And I leave around 4 and sometimes I'm here, you know, well into the evening doing special shows and stuff. So at that time, it's very hard to, to, just be con you know concentrate on one type of trading. My job is to cover the overall markets, answer questions, and educate. But Fridays I usually have off RPM covers, and I'm able to trade a little bit more. You know, I could sit at my desk and not have to you know I don't have to deal with any other responsibilities. And and that's what I did last Friday. I recorded part of it, <laughs> but then again, he stopped for lunch. You know, it's it's just not the typical. You know, it's a it's a hard thing to sit there in eight hours and go over every single trade but that's what i want to try to attempt to do in a way this week is really pay attention to this and take these setups because the methodology is there and i you know and i've proven that i've proven that we have a methodology that gives us you know quote a higher probability uh setup in the market you know a, a, a place where the market's going to make a big move in the directions of our signals <clears throat> excuse me the one thing i i um i'm trying to constantly um bring you know kind of get across there is that you got to trade you got to treat trading as a business and with a business you have to have a business handbook you know and all great businesses have that handbook you go to the business every situation is covered in the in the in, you know in your business handbook your um your business plan basically so trading for me is a business, and so everything has to be played out, and it, it helps my personality type. We all are, are different in different type of ways. We handle pressure, how to handle stress. Some of our some people are greedier, more apt to gamble. Some are very cautious, and when you have a setup, or when we have a certain advantage in the market, we got to overcome these things and be forced to take these trades, and only that. We'll get to a point where we can start profiting and making consistent money in the markets. It is a very hard thing. You know, like I said, I've been trading since 96. And fear, greed, all these emotions um, play a big part in trading. It really does. And, you know, in your, in your bank account, if you have enough money to trade, if you're trading with money that you need to live on, all these things play a big factor. But... But to get this across, because we all want to, you know, we all want to be self-sufficient and be a trader and, and do whatever we want to do as a trader, travel, you know, provide, um, make money, live the life you want to live. I love that. I love that about trading. I love getting up in the morning. One of the few people that I know that hate Fridays, <laughs> you know, hate Fridays and hate three-day weekends, even though, you know, it's a holiday, but, you know, I enjoy what I do. It's it's a trader's lifestyle. Is this your ideal lifestyle? I don't know. It does. It doesn't look bad, but I'm not. I'm not here to tell you that's going to happen. Um, there's a lot of work to trading. So um, again, let's get back to where we where we want to go with this video because you know my videos always tend to be a little bit long. 
Um, I got a lot of things I just want to kind of kind of get uh, across to you. Let me get through this. Hold on. Let me pause this a second. This is actually the Money Show. If you go to, I think if you go to the Money Show and look at my uh, look up Day Trading Radio, get to the profile there. I did some good seminars on on the Money Show. Um, some of these are really good. Developing a trading plan, part one. This is all important stuff that you need to do. I got probably like six view all videos. I think I got probably like six or eight video, uh, appearances at the Money Show. Yeah, eight here. Um, it's a current library. So the object here is on Friday, I was able to trade a lot. And we're going to talk about trading the futures, the, ME, the MES, which are the micro contract, the, the S&P uh, 500 contract, the E-mini contract. You're familiar with that. Well, they have the micro contract. And the micro contract, just again, not to be a beginner's video, um, the micro contract is a little different from the regular E-mini contract. E-mini contract is... Um, should we say, you know, that was always the standard. And for one point, basically, you would, for one contract, one point, you would receive um, $50 or $50. So each stick was 12 and a half. With the, um, the micro contract, now it's one tenth of that. So for every point you gain on the micro contract, which is the MES, you have the ES up on the board here. Both of these run off, you know, the S&P 500. It's the micro and, and the mini. So it doesn't really matter. Both are gonna give you the same patterns and everything. I could look at the ES, uh, S, ES chart here and, and have the same and take the trades on the MES just as well. So that's what I normally do. So, so one contract equals $5, it's one tenth of the e-mini so it's the micro and one point represents five dollars so multiply that by how many contracts you have and then you got a feel for what you're dealing with but the other big thing is the cost of these contracts and with a discounted broker and don't don't say that discounted broker makes it sound um dirty or not a legitimate company you know i always thought that you know discounted why do i something what's wrong with it if it's discounted it's just the way it is there's a couple of good discounted brokers out there and where they don't charge you as much margin for these contracts um and they're they're basically called discounted brokers most of them on average will give you an es contract where for like five hundred dollars and a micro contract will be fifty dollars a contract that means you have to put up fifty dollars to put for each contract to trade they're worth you know not bad that's really really where you want to go to start and, and you know open up an account with a discount broker so you're able to get multiple contracts multiple contracts are very important in this method it's very very important it's probably probably the second most important thing the first important thing is is taking the trade and i know in what to trade there's three good setups we're going to be talking about the other thing is being able to take advantage of those setups you know most of these setups will continue to go but you know it's it's a balance between how far you want to let it go before it comes back <laughs> i would say looking um back on my my trading career trading both stocks futures options never really traded forex um but you know i've i just always felt um you know wealth creation holding good long-term stocks is probably one of the better ways to go but now you know developing this style of trading trading these futures i see a, a, a good benefit and a good opportunity here it's just a couple of things we have to get through you know and it's being able to you know define that um to find that area that you want to take a position in and have enough confidence to get in and letting it go and i you know maybe it's not hard for everyone but you know, the market com comes at you with a lot of different things, you know, a lot of news all the time. So you have to always analyze things. Some some setups do tend to fail and you don't want to have any losers. I, I hate getting losers. I mean, I want to have, you know, and that's probably not realistic when people were talking about trading futures. You're not going to be un undefeated trading futures. You know, it's just it's just too much. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Too many unknowns, you know, too many variables. Um, but this was Friday, and, and Friday, what I did was I get on and I was saying, all right, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at two setups, basically, in the market, two setups. 
One is the, the strict divergence, long or short divergence. And the other one is what I call a 2020 flag. Now there's other high probability zones that maybe I will take if it just feels right. Um, but majority of the time, that's where you start to get into trouble is when you start to drift off. This could be the most boring, boring way of trading. Yet if it's making you consistent money, that's the you know that's a tough thing. You go into the casino, and you have the opportunity to win a lot of money. You know you could be a rock star, uh, yet you got to sit down at that table and bet a lot of money. You know to make that. Now if you had a good indication where the market was going to move, you know this is where your opportunity is. And how far do you take of saying, all right, this is a fantastic opportunity here. Do I want to go in a lot and make this, you know, do I really want to make something or am I going to just stay stay the course? So these levels sometimes, you know, I want to be able to sometimes step up to the plate and say, all right, I want to pull out the book, big bat and take it. It's a perfect setup. And I think that's important. So, you know, part of this video, again, is, is, is reinforcing that in myself. So, like I said, I usually mark these down. I, uh, during the day, I'm looking at the setups. These are divergent setups. Each each one of oh, and one's a bull flag. And and again, not to um, go into too much on the divergence. Actually, I will show you one thing here. And this is my criteria. Uh, my criteria is like my business plan, and it's just a simple, defined set of rules. All right, uh, the order entry uh, order cr criteria uh, order entry criteria. The profit exit criteria, automatic stop, stop criteria, what's the risk management, how and when to increase your position size, how to set up your charts and some other things. And again, starting balance. You know, I would say try to start over $2,000. You know, even I do, do probably believe you probably could start with $500. Um, but basically it's all relative because you want to you wanna be that boring trader who's just waiting for the setups and and ex executing the trade with the good automatic stop cr criteria you know risk management is very important so this is and then everything is defined this is also on day trading radio if you're if you go to day trading radio find the business plan and stuff it's out there on youtube channel too The two setups we're going to be looking to do and accomplish our goals are, is, is the long and short divergence, one and five minute time frame trade. The one that's the long and short, and also the 20. Oh, I spelled that wrong. That was supposed to be <laughs> bull. What am I speaking, not thinking of there? The 2020 bull and bear flag. The bull, 2020 bull and bear flag. So these are just the two setups we're going to be trading, right? If you refer to uh, some of the notes in the in that um, webinar, you'll see what a, a divergence is. Pretty simple, where the divergence oscillator here is is diverting from what the price is doing normally or in sync. If the price is making a lower low, um, from a low and then a lower low and then a lower low, the higher lows and that trend is going down. Typically, the stochastics make a low and a lower low and a lower low, hence follows the stock down. The momentum continues. Lots of times we'll see the, the, well, not a lot of times, this is a very rare event, that's why we take it, is when the, the stochastics turn higher before, you know, as the stock is moving lower. And that is telling us the internals are switching and, and coming up. That candle is starting to turn, but you really don't see it because the candle is not fully um, completed. You could actually get a lower candle and they'll have the internals of the candle from the last moving average start to turn. So if you if you think of stochastics from a, a gauge from zero to zero to a hundred, and we're getting down, and every time we're going down, um, you know we're down here near you know near zero. We're oversold. We're oversold or oversold. Start or we're coming down to near zero, but the price is going down. The stochastics are coming down, um, and then all of a sudden the stochastics start to move back up, and that's that's the that's how that candle over the last how many periods you're you're tracking. Is starting to give an average so you can see that those candles are starting to turn on average starting to turn back up and that's exactly what that's doing a lot of people don't even realize what that stochastics doing for us it's actually giving us a, a preactive alert instead of a reactive alert we're starting to see the internal start to turn up even though the price is going down and that oh, here it is right here 
you know, so that's so important. You know, that's, that's the greatest indicator if you get to learn it and get to master it. And it's not that hard to master. Identifying it, I, I've been doing it for so many years. Now it becomes second nature, and we're able to identify those. So that's what I want to identify um, when that is happening. Now, the, the thing is, is entry, you know, how fast can you get your entry? And you always have to protect yourself from news or something overhanging the market. Um, but usually nine out of t 10 times when you get a setup, you get a move up out of it. Now, one thing I've, I've done over the years is I've built a bot to identi identify this, uh, this setup for me. I said, this setup is so good, I want to be woken up in the middle of the night. So I developed the RockBot. RockBot is a, uh, it's a script that I you know, wrote on NinjaTrader, and it identifies the, um, the divergences, basically. So let's, uh, let me show you that fast. All right, here's the NinjaTrader. Now, the NinjaTrader... You know, again, trading, another important question is what time frame do we want to trade when we're trading this, this style of method? Well, you're going to have more one-minute setups than five minutes. You're going to have more five-minute setups than 60-minute setups. You're going to have more 60-minute setups than daily minute setups. So, I mean, really, you know, but the the faster the um, the moves, there are smaller channels that are playing out. One-minute time frame is a much smaller time frame, and it does t it's very quick to move from overbought to oversold and oversold to overbought. So our profits are limited on that. We have to remember that. So if we're trading the one minute time frame, we're gonna really need our discipline to take the trades off. Because the you know the odds are the trend is you know the trend is going to continue unless we have a bigger time frame divergence. And you just want to take advantage of these. So sometimes I call these twenty dollar trades if I trade, you know, one of my uh, kind of techniques it's just trading the one minute time frame just for twenty dollars with a couple of contracts and just doing that all day it's like finding twenty dollars on the uh but look at this here's a great divergence right a, a fantastic divergence right at this point now if i run the if i run my let's see if that was going to do it i want to i want to again ninja trader you could get this script as a lifetime member at day trading radio by the way um just, i'll throw that out there I don't give the script out. I mean, you have to be a lifetime member. If, for lifetime members, I do give them. The, you get the script for free. And as many scripts. You get the, the bull and bear flag, the 2020 flag. You got the bull. You got the uh, the Thunderbird one-minute, five-minute divergence, the super signal. Some great stuff. So, all right, let's, let's talk about that um, one-minute Thunderbird buy. I, so... I put it up there, and what's my criteria going to be? All right, so say my criteria is going to be for trading this. I want to, I want to only trade. I want to start off at the basis. I always start off at the benchmark basics. Basics always multiple contracts, but the smallest about. So we're going to start off with three contracts. Basically, we start off with three contracts. Um, on a one-minute time frame, I'm usually looking for a point to two points on your first target off of divergence but it really is a situation that comes to what's happening at the time you know if there's a five minute you know the next time frame if the one minute is getting oversold and the five minutes starting to turn up and starting to you know look like it's bouncing that is you know this is something that you have to take in consideration if you go long on that one minute you might want to hold on to that now because you have the five minute also heading in your same direction and these are give you much bigger returns so for the for the tradeometer, or actually the rock bot, the tradeometer is another indicator we use. For the rock bot, you know, I like to get the order entry using the rock bot, and then manually take control and say, anal you know, analyze the setup. And that's what you're gonna. That's what I'm there for. My goal is here is basically to have a real good team of traders focus on this every day, and we just kick, we just just make the money over and over again, and we're focused on it like a business. Um. And we're all on the same page. Um, so three contracts. First, co uh, first profit. It can be four ticks. We're going to take two off at that point. So we're going to be in the profit zone pretty fast. And then the next profit zone, we're not going to. We're going to put zero. Now <laughs> I have to teach you about the how this whole, whole thing works. That, you know, but that's that's what I do also. And there's a lot of videos on the Rockbot. But uh, basically, you can put as many contracts as you want here, and then divide them under. First profit, second profit, and trailing stop. Uh, what I want to do is take most of mine off on the first profit, which is four ticks, 
And then that leaves me one, two minus three is one, and I'm not gonna have a second profit, I'm just gonna automatically default to a trailing stop. So it's not gonna be, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put zero, zero here. Stop loss says 12, but down here, it says stop loss SL type. Now you could you could use ticks. If it use ticks, then you have to click on ticks. And if you use ticks, then you're gonna use 12, but don't. I recommend using the signal bar low. Signal bar low is basically the divergence is identified and it puts it puts your um, put your stop one tick underneath the, the divergence low. Um, so this once this is on the divergence low, you don't have to worry. Whatever number is here, it's def it's not even gonna be using it. So it doesn't even have to worry about it. But this is the important part. This is like, all right, we could take off our profit and then move trailing start, tick, the trailing start starts after four ticks. Meaning once we go up four ticks, this trailing stop will come in. And where is that trailing stop gonna come in? It's gonna come in four ticks underneath the price. Now four ticks underneath the price is gonna be our break even area. Cause we already went up four, we went up four ticks, took profits, Trailing stop starts at four ticks, and where does it go in? Four ticks underneath the price, which we just came from. So that automatically puts, whatever this number is, <laughs> these two numbers would be, our break-even stop would be the same. And then I don't I don't change the, uh, how the increments are. It's one tick at a time. It's a safe, don't, don't touch the one or anything. And that's, <clears throat> that's about it. Now let's, uh, let's run this. Let's just run it and see what it identifies. Like I said, let's see if it identifies that divergence. Now we're gonna show you something else. Um, all right, so what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna run it, it's on Sim 101. So I have to make sure my chart is on 101 here, it, which it is. Oh, and there it is. So here it is. You can see it identified the divergence. It took the the next you know candle after the divergence which it, it has to do because it's not completed and once the divergence completes the next candle will get the um, alert to it um and look at all the space you had here look at this look at it continue to run so but it did take it off after four ticks and it had a trailing stop and probably got a little bit more all right so that's you know that's look at that move it made it, it called the bottom <laughs> At one o'clock, the lower the mark, and you know what? Divergences will do that. Divergence will give you great opportunities, and that's why I say there's so much money to be made here. If we could identify, you know, we can identify them. That's not a problem. It's executing and letting it run and and feeling comfortable. This was a perfect divergence. I mean, if I come back and I said, "Oh man, I missed that," it really does piss me off because I said that was easy money. That was easy money. Um. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to show you a kind of a cool thing. You can do a back test on any scripts or any strategies using NinjaTrader. So I want to do that right now, um, and that way we could kind of jump to all these setups. I want to. So if I go to uh, Strategy Analyzer here. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I want to take our strategy that we're doing. It's the um, one minute by divergence. Now this is one minute. We also have setups on the five minutes, which tend to give us a lot bigger position. So, so we take it off at four. How many are I going to have? I'm going to have three contracts. Um, two are going to come off. Take profits. We're going to put that zero. Take profit zero. Stop loss. Not worried. So remember, we had a four and a four and a four break even trailing stop. Select instrument. MES, all right, it's a micro 12 December contract, and we're not going to do the whole year, but we're going to just do the last week, so we can look at the trades. It takes forever to do these backtesting things. Oops, can't do the future. Imagine you can go into the future, there was a bug in it, and it told us what the <laughs> trades were in the future. All right, so we'll go here to there, trading hours. We'll just use that um, and the day break. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so let's run this. Let's run this for last week and see what numbers come up and show you some kind of cool things, how to make our trading a little bit better based on that. Now, this is going to run the divergence. If we took in all the divergence here, all these um, 
if we were able to just let this thing run, basically. Now, I'm not saying this again, this is very set up with a very tight. It's only looking for four ticks, which is nothing. That's five dollars per contract. All right. Um, it's it's basically just identifying the setups for us. It has no, tra I mean, the trailing stops are only at four sticks. So, I mean, any type of pullback is going to hit a trailing stop. Very hard to get any ground on this. I'm not looking for a lot here. All right, push and run. It's moving. Hopefully it comes out positive. Oh, it came out negative. So it came out negative. Why did it come out negative? Um, so what do I have here? It shouldn't come out negative. How many trades did it take? 68%, 43. It has to do something with my stop. 68% accuracy, 66, 63 trades, 43 winning trades, 17 losing trades. Um, gross loss. Average losing trade. What am I on here? Let me see what I'm doing here. All right, I'm running it again. I had it on the wrong time. For some reason, it was on just some kind of funky thing. Um, didn't make sense because I know this always is kind of positive for me. Anyway, this is a little bit better. Um, 59 trades or 40, yeah, it's the same amount. I think it was just trading, I don't know, weird time frame here. Maybe it was going overnight, I don't know. Anyway, now it's kind of straightened back out here a bit. But this is, again, super, super tight. So, but I think the important part here is understanding how many trade opportunities are triggered, how many of are winning trades, and how many are losing trades and break-even trades. Now, that's just taken off a of basic. Now, what I want to do is actually bring up the chart on this. And I can bring up the chart on this. And now what I want to do is overlay the stochastics on this. I'm going to use the fast stochastics, <clears throat> bring them down, add them to it. Now it's 14.3. Actually, um, hmm, we'll keep these on the 9.3. Close, bar, candle here. <clears throat> now you have the plotted lines, you know, two lines, and D is the moving the line that. That's our signal line to D, basically. So we want to make that a little bit brighter. So I'm going to move that to t 2, just to make it a little easier to read. And then we're going to go down to the K line. And I hate the K line because it's just a crappy. Th th who wants it? So I'm going to change that to transparent. I'm not even going to look at the K line. That's why my stochastics only have one line where everyone else's has two lines, which is going to confuse the crap out of you. You don't want to go through the, anything underneath this, you know, time frame under like 60 minutes. You don't want to use two lines for crossovers. It's too choppy. So make it transparent, apply it, and then it should come up here. So here's my, my, you know, right down here. Actually, you could see there was a divergence here. Hmm. All right, let's see. Maybe it's, let's see what it's. Let's see if it is picking up anything. Oh, it picked up a divergence here. This was a good divergence. Why didn't it pick up the other divergence? All right. Well, this is the one we were looking at. Here was a nice divergent, but look where it took it off. Look where it took it off here. Very. I mean, it could have captured all this, all this. So one thing you we might want to consider doing now, because we see this. Oh, well, let's go back a little further. Let's just see what we, where it is. All right, this one. That worked out good, you know, that, and again, you probably had a little bit more on this. Remember, the divergence is going to give you a move against the move that's been going. It's going to give you a, a bigger than average move of the, you know, of the direction. I always try to, to point that out. Usually, if we have a, a downward trend, it's usually tightening and divergence. You kind of got to break it that downward trend where the bigger trend actually could continue down. So that's why in a one-minute time frame, we're usually taking the trade off the divergence until it gets overbought. And that's why we have to, you know, consider taking profits once it gets above that 80 line. Now, in the case with trailing stops, it just kind of protects you if the price comes back down. But in some cases, if it's too choppy, 
they could hit your stop and continue to go higher. Automated training is very tough. I like to, I never like to let it because I could feel like I could identify better setups or control the trade a little bit easier. Like here, here's a nice divergence, but this one candle was, it got it triggered, but during that candle, it came down and went down a little lower. So in this candle range, it had the buy signal. It started off as a buy signal. <laughs> and then it had the, the, the low of the candle also was hit. So the trailing stop came in. So it was kind of a, a tough, tough area, even though that was a great divergence. Here, double bottom divergence, which I programmed in for this things. And that one took in full advantage of the pop. So you can see most of these are taking full advantage of the pops and you know you can't how are you going to get into something like that unless well i could see and you could see it right i tell you all the time you know a stock that comes down to the recent level and the stochastics turn up above that 20 line you got to be buying what predicted that move tell me this was the perfect setup right here way before the big spike it happens on all of them all of them now what i'm going to do is i want to Say, all right, we're gonna we still gonna keep our two contracts f off after four ticks, but let's make our trailing stop. Let's give us some more room to run with. So let's start our trailing stop <clears throat> at six and go to six. All right, so instead of four, we're gonna go to six. Now remember what do we have? We were up forty six dollars. Not much, I mean, not much. But I mean, the trade percentage is great. It's all about managing the trade. I'm just want to make sure this is good. Percentage profitability. Um, how many when, you know? How many good identifiable trades are? And some of these losing trades that were actually good trades. It's just that <laughs> you know, you know, the the stop was too tight. Um, excuse me for my cough. I got a tickle in my throat today. So let's do this. Let's push run and see what the difference is. So we had 46, 25. We opened up our trailing stop. It's not as tight. We can give it some time to run. Abracadabra. Didn't give us much more. It actually went down. So let's see. What do I have to give? What do I have to do here? Trailing stop eight. Let's take a look here. Wow. All right. So we got to give it time. We got to give it eight tick trailing start starts after two points of a move up trailing start if, if it moves up two points. All right. So it's given that it's given it time to move. And that's a big difference. It gives us 25 points um, overall profit factors going up a little. Now the truth is, I don't put too much into the back testing here because what I want, I really want, is the the setups. I, I can manage the setups good live. I mean, I think it really does count come, come down to key areas of understanding when a good divergence is, understanding what the underlying trend is. Some of these things that the um, bot hasn't programmed, I haven't programmed in yet. You know what the underlying five minute time frame is. This could easily been taken for you know a couple hundred dollars in the trade. You kind of probably could have ran this up, probably held the 20 period moving average. Um, so, you know, I think it's about that. And and that's just one trade. That is just one setup. Now we don't have the bear setup, which is just the opposite. Let me see here. Um, let me see if I can go back to the charts here. Hmm. I saw, but I think I saw a divergence over here before. Right here. So this was a nice divergence right here. Um, it was two nice divergences. Oh my God, look at this. And then, and then looking back at these, I'm like just amazed how well. Look at that. Much higher low. Look at that 20 line up here. The big space between that. Perfect pullback. <clears throat> and it usually happens on these these pops. Um, 
you know, these fast little pops and then big reversals. But the reversal cannot be hidden by the stochastics. The stochastics are known what's going on here way before everything else is. Look at that. You can't hide from a stochastic divergence. F F2. I should just push F2, right? So that was another divergence. So I even put those put those in here. Even though that looks like a potential divergence, it didn't give us a, a breakdown underneath the 20 line here. But it's kind of a borderline divergence here. Might have been something. You know, and you're always all looking at each of the candles too. There's other things that play out. But it, it, like you said, he might not have a, a good setup in a while. Um, and that's, you know, that might take you a while. And, and while you're sitting here, you know, you're, you're measuring things out. You're looking for things. You might just decide, to, you know what, I'm bored. I want to get in. That happens a lot. But that throws off your whole record. All the work you've done, all that, all that um, research you've been doing, all the, the discipline you've been achieving gets all thrown out the window because you start taking things outside the criteria. So starting tomorrow, Monday, like I said, hopefully I keep this thing going pretty good because it could, it could burn out a little watching these markets so intently. But I'll be identifying this. Here was a beautiful short, and you got to take those shorts when you get them. Stop above that. Um, another divergent short right here, which I didn't identify. That's happened at 920. That's right at the open. And that, lots of times we will get divergent. We did take this trade. I think I, I did take this. Tra I took this trade too. Um, then we had a, what we another setup here, and I, I'm liking these setups more and more, especially when we have a trend day. They call the 2020 bull flag is where the price has popped and pulls back to the 20, and and the, the rotation here happens extremely fast, extremely fast, it gets down to that 20 line. Yet the 60 period stochastic stays above the 80 line. Now, I think it you know it always works if it's up around 90. It just seems to have. That is such a big number. The 90 level, it's extreme strength. That 60-10 uh, stochastic is pinned up around 90, and you're pulling, and that and that fast stochastic pulls back to oversold, and we're holding above the 20. as a great bull flag for a pop. I kind of had it here again. Well, this was a divergence. So very easy to see that. Nice little pullback and a reversal. And then we had another bull flag. So look at look at these little opportunities. Each one of these maybe not here, but this opportunity was like the the only pullback you're getting at this point, and a nice uptrend today. And you don't get too many opportunities. Like there's one right there, and that little pullback. Here's a small pullback, and this is a small pullback. So there's the flag. There's a flag. There's a divergence. All of them work out, and this is where we left off. So come Monday, you know, next divergence, want to take that, want to build that count up, want to get to a point where, hey, you could uh, you get a nice setup like this, you know, a nice divergence. You want to throw some big, you know, something big at it. You know, you have this opportunity out there just to kind of, you know, even go step up to the ES and do a couple ES contracts where one point is no longer $5, one point is $50. You know, you easily took three or four points on these things. Easy, all these, with the market move, you know, volatility in the market. These things move far and fast. Usually average four or five points. That's not a problem. 10, 20 points is sometimes very easy to get in this market. 10 points has is, is become average. Imagine a 10 point move on, on a, you know, one, e, uh, one ES contract. It's $500. Get a couple of those a day, a couple two point moves. You just need, uh, you know, five of them. So, you know where I'm going with this. You got to step up. We got to step up. I'm going to be doing this full time, um, you know, working through some of the issues I have of, um, of being more focused on these setups, not being as. And I, again, I have a duty on the radio show too. But I want people to realize the opportunity that we have here. There's a tremendous opportunity, and I think if everyone in, embraces it and, and and wants it, you know, 
it'll be easier to uh, to cover this all the time. So I just you know want to let you know that that is it. That is important. Just as I'm finishing up this video, the futures have opened. It is Sunday night, and futures are opening green a little here. Can't wait to get into it. I'm like, usually, um, you know, we have to wait a few minutes before we start seeing any, any signals really develop. I mean, I don't expect any. There's no divergences to be seen until one sets up, and you got to have a, a pattern set up. So usually, um, like on a Sunday night right now, I, I, I look back at the markets maybe around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, see what Asia happens, uh, what happens around Asia at 8 to 9 o'clock time frame. But basically... Uh, Hey, it's not it's not crashing. That's a good thing. So mm -hmm. tomorrow again, starting a uh, kind of a new phase. Really going to put a little bit more effort into um, trading the micros and updating everyone on them. I feel like the methodology is sound. Everything else is sound. It's just about being in front of it, and you know, and that just takes time of being there. We have the indicators. We have the bot. We have everything else to kind of help us catch them but it really de it really depends on me being in front of the computer and and seeing it set up it's all about sometimes uh seeing it over and over again so you're able to anticipate it in some cases and when you're able to anticipate a trade then you have uh you know then you even get a better jump on it and I, i'm not against that you know i'm not against that at all because i use that a lot you know um so so again We'll start that tomorrow. So I want to get this out just to kind of talk about there's great opportunities in the market. We're looking to trade three contracts um, of the MES as, just as a benchmark. You could uh, you could do that on the ES. You could do that on any, any amount you want. You could do 20 or 30. You're going to just compound those results. And, um, and we want to put a little bit more weight on some of the better setups. Again, and I will identify them like this. We will circle each setup, we'll take them. We'll see pretty much everything and how it works out real time. So, and then I'll probably report on it the next day, put out a video and just kind of talk about like I'm talking now. It's a lot of work though, um, so I'll do that maybe, you know, once a week. We'll kind of recap some of the trades. All right, hope you enjoy it. Day Trading Radio. That's where that's where you will see it. DayTradingRadio.com. And I uh, hope this video um, finds you in a good place. See, see you in the markets.